Ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats. You know, the reality is cultural divides happen in all walks of life. And you know what? If you're within the sound of my voice, that must mean you are in the seats with once more. As always, my name is Dave Voigt, and I'm the host of this podcast, where we sit down with a wide-ranging variety of entertainment industry professionals, and we pick their brain about current projects, state of the industry, how they got started, and so very much more in a light and in a conversational fashion. And you know, if you like how we do things around here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump out onto that limb and assume that you do because you're listening right now. Uh, and if you are, hit that subscribe button. Give us the old five-star rating on your podcast provider of choice. We're available pretty much everywhere. Places like Apple, Amazon, Spotify, Google. And plus, we archive every single one of our episodes over at our In The Seats YouTube channel. So if you can give us a like and subscribe there as well, we'd absolutely appreciate it. Also, don't hesitate to follow us on the social media, as the kids call it. We're on the Facebook, we're on the Twitter, we're on the Instagram, we're on the Letterboxd, we're on the TikTok, and, well, we're probably a few other places, too, for all sorts of fun updates at where else would we be, at In The Seats. But, uh, finally, and I do dare say most importantly, please pay us a visit over at In The Seats, intheseats.ca, for all the latest and greatest from the world of film, television, basically the moving image at large, because guess what? If we love to watch it and write about it and talk about it, we'd love it even more when you come by and read about it and listen about it. So do us that kindness and pay us a visit. On this episode, you bet or believe it, we're still elbow deep in the Toronto International Film Festival, which is running uh, from the 7th to the 17th here in our fair city with a myriad of selection of films. And once more... We are diving into the Shorts Cuts uh, program, looking into some short films, and uh, this one is a fun one. It is called uh, Gigi Ali, uh, and it's uh, it's such a simple but really a uniquely relatable story. It's uh, it's the it's the it's the story of a young man who is uh, split between his Chinese heritage. And his Canadian upbringing, and Ali, you know, in 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 hopes of connecting this bridge and this divide, learns Mandarin as as a means of connecting with his his family and his history and his legacy. But as an adult, he discovers that his path to understanding his biracial identity is a lot more complicated than he expected. And I mean, this is very much an autobiographical story from the uh, writer and director uh, James Michael Chang who we had the unique pleasure of sitting down and talking with and he made a great piece of cinema it's funny as hell but there's an honesty to it as well and we talk a little bit about uh, the importance of being involved uh, uh, in in, in not only in a festival like TIFF but in in making short film because again it's uh, it's one of those things that, you know, at least from our perspectives, never it doesn't always get the love that it deserves. And I mean, we love short film, and I mean, we we hope that you do too. And uh, one sec, I just gotta figure out which uh, program it's playing in. Didn't have that note ahead of me. Yeah, it's playing in Shortcuts Program Six, which is having its first screening on Tuesday, September twelfth, at six forty-five at the Scotia Bank. Uh, so if you're interested, go check it out. Go check out all the shorts. It, they deserve uh, they deserve the audience uh, because uh, they're films too, and there are actually some really good ones in there. But uh, first, enjoy our talk with James Michael Chang, uh, and it's a good one. I really thought it was a good one. But uh, enjoy and enjoy Tiff. Go watch movies. It's important. All right. Bye, everyone. All right, well, just to kick it off, obviously, officially, man, just just congrats on the film, man, and just congrats on uh, being a part of TIFF. I can imagine it's uh, it's definitely definitely a bit of a twist in the head to sort of uh, be on this journey. But uh, I guess my first question is, like, walk me through uh, the origin of this story that, you know, got you into the shorts program at TIFF. Yeah, well, thanks so much. Um, I mean, the origin of it was, so I, I mean, I went to school for photography, and then I kind of worked my way up at a commercial production company as, like, a you know assistant to a commercial director and you know even in school at photo school people are always like you got to find your voice got to find your voice um and then during covid like during all of the blm kind of protests there was a big push for um bipoc representation within like the commercial space 
Sure. Um, so my commercial rep was asking me if I wanted to be put on these like BIPOC lists for like create directors and creators. And I, I kind of felt a little bit conflicted there because I felt like, well, I'm not fully Chinese. I'm only half. Like, I don't think I belong on that list. And then some of my um, Asian friends uh, who are also photographers and, and creators were like, dude, your last name's Chang. Obviously, you can be part of this. Like, you're, like, you're Chinese. And then I thought, oh, okay. I think I found my voice here. And, I think, and then I started to, to kind of like just think of little scenarios in my own life where I kind of felt like I wasn't Chinese enough or white enough. And then kind of just like kind of morph the story into those little, little moments. No, and I mean, it, it plays out so well. And I mean, it's such a simple idea, but I mean, it all just unfolds in such a really sweet, but I mean, simple like fashion. And I mean, I mean, not to give anything away for people who are going to go to the shorts program and see it, but I mean, the last shot of your film, man, I was just dying laughing. I was, I was <laughs> on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the uh, I mean, not to give anything away, but yeah, that's like, those are kind of like true moments in my own life where I just kind of felt like, Oh, okay. <laughs> was it important for you putting this together to not kind of overcomplicate it, to just really sort of give a very sort of straight line, simple idea? Yeah, I think so. I think um, uh, I really like kind of like observational sort of filmmaking. And I think um, I just wanted to kind of make it feel very, yeah, simple and to the point. And, and I wanted to make sure that people kind of got like the, the duality between like, you know, half, you know, like the biracial kind of, two sides so i thought hey, i didn't want it to be too complicated and yeah no i mean i love the look of it i mean just i mean just it's very clean and i mean just even in the shots in the classroom it felt like you were trying to make this character very small in a very big world like how important like how intentional was that for you to try to make this be very i guess to borrow the you know the right word would probably be cinematic because again it's got a real big feel to it yeah yeah no um my my dp shane hana um uh we shot on film on the shot 35 and oh, wow. one of the big things was uh we really wanted like those wide shots to feel big and, and make the character feel small um and kind of make his world feel like almost overwhelming in those wide shots and then you know juxtapose that with like some really interesting close-ups and and stuff that kind of feel like you're kind of with him i think um you know medium format photography and like just like just having a really photographic approach to, to it was really important to me to make it kind of feel like you're just kind of watching this this character. No, I mean, shooting a short on 35 feels, I mean, for a lack of a better word, brave. I mean, Pat, like how oh, yeah. do you manage to sort of get that even done? Because I mean, again, you know, these films are, are not made with budgets. And I mean, to, to get a 35 camera and to get, you know, even if it's end runs a film, costs money. Yeah, I, I, I was lucky enough to get funding from Canada Arts and Ontario Arts. Um, uh, and I just really wanted to swing hard. I wanted to swing really hard on this one, and you know, half the budget went to the film. But it was like, it was one of my first times shooting like on thirty five. I've shot little kind of projects here and there on sixteen, but it was <laughs> extremely nerve wracking the whole the whole way through. Like we normally like a lot of my commercial work is like very doc doc style. I just let the camera run and roll forever, and just kind of find those the the magic in the in the edit. Um, but this was like we got to rehearse and and um, like just hearing the the film just go, you just kind of felt like oh man, that's the money. <laughs> that's a different kind of pressure when you're shooting a three minute take and you've only got seven minutes worth of film in there. I can imagine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, I mean, I'm curious because I mean, obviously, like you said, you know, like we talked about off air, you're like you're going through this process for the first time you're getting involved in the festival space. Like how important is it to just be able to sort of be included on a platform like TIFF? Because I mean, it's one thing because audiences may not necessarily engage with short films like we would want them to, but it's such a great platform for guys like you to just get your stuff seen in general. Yeah, I think it's really important. I feel like, um, especially with like filmmaking or image making, or even just any sort of arts in general, you always kind of feel like a bit of an imposter syndrome, like um, whenever you're doing stuff. So having kind of that stamp of approval of like official selection by TIFF is like really kind of important. I think um, uh, short films are kind of the next generation of, of, of filmmakers. So it's kind of really cool to, to, to be a part of that. And even in my own program, I'm really kind of excited to see 
the other filmmakers that and see like kind of where everyone's careers go from from here because it's kind of like just like the starting point of 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 your own kind of film career really no absolutely man and i mean i've got to imagine it's just one of those things where and especially in this day and age it feels like given the push towards short form content it feels like short films are getting more and more accepted but i mean i'm kind of curious from your perspective as a filmmaker what is it about short form that has say advantages over you know the feature or the tv because i mean again it's one of those things where you don't think about it but i mean you can have a full narrative arc in like a nine minute story yeah well i mean for me like i come from commercials so i work in like 30 second and right oh, second so, so this was long for radio for you okay <laughs> yeah this was like like a whole tv series like a 10 seasons tv series like a nine minute <laughs> film is so long and, and indulgent for me um because you know with commercials it's like you basically have time for like a smile or like it's like a picture really yeah. so so i think um you know my trajectory from studying photography like like a single frame to and then commercials where it's like you know, 30 second medium to now uh, like a short form, which is like, you know, 10 to 20 minutes. Like I'm slowly kind of like building up what that story can be. And I think, um, yeah, I think short films, it's just nice. To, and you can kind of tell like really simple stories. You don't have to get into like crazy backgrounds of, of what this person is or who this person is. You just kind of, again, like, like I said, like I really like observational storytelling and I, I love to people watch. So I think like, uh, you know, a, a short format is like the perfect, perfect, perfect medium for that. No, I mean, I'm curious. Do you see yourself sort of working up to making longer, longer projects and longer films, or, or do you have a three and a half hour script in your back pocket somewhere, and you're going into production next? Week? <laughs> no, I mean, yeah, that's that was the goal. Like, the, um, I have some friends uh, who produce TV series and, and stuff. Like, like Chris Hatcher um, is a, a friend of mine, and. The reason why I made the short was because I was like, how do I get into like TV and like feature films? Like I want to do that stuff. I like, like, um, and he was like, you just gotta start doing shorts. So the goal is to to get that longer form stuff. And I think I think cutting your teeth with with um, commercials and and short films is a really good way to kind of just sharpen your craft. Um, it almost feels like you're at like the filmmaking gym when you're when you when you're doing these types of things. Is there a is there a film or a moment in your young life that sort of got you into this business that made you sort of interested to sort of pursue this path? You know, that's kind of funny. I, I kind of see myself, I, I, I call myself like a born again artist because I, like in, in school, high school, and, and I was more into sports and I didn't really like art. I thought okay. that art, well, art to me always felt like you had to be really good at drawing or really good at music. Like right. there was no room for like really self-expression. So um, I kind of came at, at into this form a little bit later in life um but yeah i think i think uh yeah what was it sorry what was that question well just again? like was there something that like was there something you saw that made you go hey maybe i can do that like a movie oh, yeah, or a yeah. show that kind of thing yeah well i mean like even last year like um seeing graham foy's the maiden or like oh, God, Tyler, yeah, such a gorgeous Tyler Evans, yeah like diaspora like uh seeing kind of local like because I'm based in Toronto, like so, seeing other Toronto filmmakers like do like shorts, I kind of was like, oh, I can definitely do it too, or like I can kind of let me let me try to do this as well. Kind of like a skateboarder analogy, you know, if you hang it with really good skateboarders, like you'll you'll end up like trying what they're trying. So that's kind of like why I got kind of interested in this sort of world. Well, and I mean, it's so interesting too because I mean, audiences do kind of have a preconceived notion of what. Canadian content is quote unquote but I mean there is such a diverse array of filmmakers out there who are making such fantastic stuff I mean much like yourself that that it, it's really fantastic to see how the definition of Canadian cinema is kind of being redefined with all this great stuff going on yeah I think there's a lot of really interesting stories within Canada that yeah. haven't been have, have yet to be untapped and I think yeah we're such a diverse place that there's lots of really interesting things to say about Canada within like the medium of film for sure man absolutely now I mean I gotta ask are you gonna get to enjoy the festival a little bit or I mean are you gonna be stressed out until you're screening and then then maybe you can relax <laughs> I'm gonna try to enjoy it um it's just so crazy like last year I went just as like a as like a, a viewer a fan like just to right. watch films 
and to be on the other side just feels like so foreign to me. But I'm going to take some beta blockers and <laughs> some vitamin B complex and just kind of <laughs> just kind of try to enjoy it um, <laughs> and really try to just soak it in because I feel like you know this is my first short ever, and to get into TIFF is like I have to pinch myself every day because I'm like. Even when I got the invitation, to, like the official invitation, I had to like reread the email and refresh the page, like refresh the the browser because I was like, "Wait, that's not real." So it's yeah, you so, don't you so don't expect to hit a home run, you know, first time up at bat, right? But you like, yeah, this is the equivalent <laughs> thereof for sure. Yeah, so I have to manage my expectations for the next one. <laughs> now, I mean, just to put a bow on this, like. Let's say you're at the festival, you're in line for a movie, so you're talking to someone. Oh, you're a filmmaker. You've got something here? Oh, yeah, it's a short film. Oh, shorts? Oh, I've never seen short films before. How do you sell them on the short film form? Oh, that's a good question. I mean, I feel like you could, I would sort of try to sell it as, um, I mean, even in today's day and age where attention spans are so, so little that I feel like, um, if you went to a short film screening, you get to see like a bunch of different shorts and they're all like, you know, 10 to 20 minutes long. So you get more, more, more bang for your buck, really. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. No, I mean, I know it's, I mean, I hate using the analogy, but it's almost like, you know, the equivalent of flipping through your reels or flipping through your TikTok, but just, you know, doing it properly and, you know, seeing it. It's like, it's kind of the same <laughs> idea, but it allows for, like such a diverse array of stories in like that one sort of chunk. And I mean, I think it's a beautiful thing, but I mean, James, honestly, uh, congrats on the work, man. And enjoy the ride seriously. And just, you know, thank you for the time today. Yeah. Thanks so much. And don't forget to, to visit our friends over at Bay street video for all your DVD, Blu-ray rental or purchasing needs this summer as they are still open for curbside and some mailing delivery as well. Over at 1172 Bay Street, Toronto, Ontario, Canada, you can give them a call at 416-964-9088. That's 416-964-9088. Or send them an email at baystreetvideoto at gmail.com for any of your DVD and Blu-ray needs.